Hi Jeremy, so today we're going to do a bit of an assessment of the ocular surface, but before we start, we need to understand how much are you feeling. I'm Dr. Sonia Travewarte. I've done a PhD at Aston University, so now I specialize on different treatments for dry eye, when to change from one to another, how to subclassify that, that dry eye. In terms of the dry eye definition, we know that dry eye disease is a multifactorial disease, but there's a thing that links it all together, which is the loss of homeostasis, which is that balancing. So we have things such as symptomatology, which is the patient, what the patient's feeling, but we also have some instability of the osmolarity, which is um, the, what we call the saltiness levels of the tears. And then we have a, a vicious circle when we enter with inflammation, damage of the, the tissues, but there's also something that plays a, a role, which is the sensation, the, the abnormal sensation of the pain or no pain at all. So in terms of the classification, we need to make sure that we understand that our patients need to fulfill certain criteria and tick certain boxes in order to um, be diagnosed with dry eyes. So in this case, what we need is some signs, which is what we'll be doing when we do the testing, and then some symptoms, which is what they feel and what they score, the questionnaires that we give them ahead of time. So in terms of the tests that we'll do, We'll start with the triaging questions. We need to understand what those patients are feeling. And then after that, we're gonna go to the tests. Once we've done that diagnose, only then we can subclassify into more evaporative type, a mixed type, a more aqueous type, and then give and tailor the right treatment for them. Hi, Jeremy. So today we're gonna to do a bit of an assessment of the ocular surface. But before we start, we need to understand how much are you feeling? The, the dryness, if you're feeling any grittiness, any watery eyes. So for that, we have different questionnaires. So the first thing, the, tri the triaging questions would be, uh, I normally start with how much discomfort you're having. It's important to know if the discomfort is coming from the two eyes or only one. And also if the vision is affected. I normally ask the patient, if you blink, does the vision clear up? So that's quite important for us to understand because that could be something related with the tear film or not related to the tear film. Then also for how long those symptoms have been happening and if there's anything that triggered them, such, a, such as a, a surgery or um, an allergy or a contact lens wear, anything. So that's what we need to sort of do a bit of research uh, on what's happening with those patients. Also, it's good to understand if there's any discharge, if there's any grittiness or irritation on those eyes. So we always ask all of that. Um, also, the use of contact lenses would be good for, for us to understand if, if they're wearing and which type they're wearing. And then also we, uh, we need to ask about conditions, like overall conditions. We need to know if there's any enlarged glands, if there's any other issues such as Sjogren's or other things that could be happening. We have a couple of validated questionnaires. One is the OSDI, which is the Ocular Surface Disease Index. And then we have the DQ5, which is the dry questionnaire that it has five questions. So we need to be quite specific on, on why and when, because we need those to actually match what the patient's feeling. I normally do it just before they come in. So while they're in the waiting room, um, they have to wait either way. So they just, at least they can get you some information. So the two of them, they are slightly different, but it depends on what you're aiming to, to, to see. But it's also really good for the patient to know which score they're at before they start a treatment or surgery or, or whatever they're having or contact lenses, because like this, we want to see how that is changing along, along the days. So the first one, the OSDI. So OSDI started with mild being from 13 to 22 ish, moderate from 23 to 30, and then more severe 30 and above. The way that it works, we have to add the values that the patient has been telling us. We multiply that by 25 and we divide it by the number of questions that they've answered. The next thing that we'll do is we'll check the other questionnaires. And then we have the dry eye questionnaire five. So we have two, four, six, 10, 12. And for that one, anything that's more than six, it is positive for dry eye. So we have that one. And then the sandy, which is this one over here, that's a line from zero to 10 millimeters. And we just put a ruler in there. The patient has probably about half of the time, it's how often their eyes feel dry. And probably about 60, obviously we have to measure this, is how severe it is. So half of the time, he's having a lot of very severe symptomatology. So I normally use this when I'm treating my patients to understand um, after this treatment, 
is the score changing? Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? So it's something that gives me numbers and it's also good for the patient to understand, oh, actually I was in a 70 and I'm on a 60. So that, that seems to work quite well for the patients. What we go next is onto the risk factors. So we have two different types of risk factors, the ones that they're modifiable and the non-modifiable ones. So I always ask, um, is there any specific area that you're working, that there's dry environments, there's heating or air conditioning? Mainly in the office with the heater and the air con, mm -hmm. um, in front of the computer. Then there's things that we can do, the, the modifiable ones, which is um, the computer use, for example, the use of contact lenses, um, different hormone replacement, uh, methodologies and androgen deficiency and the environment. Like, those are things that can sort of change or mold into to not have that much dryness. Things such as medication as well, which in collaboration with the GP you can we can work to. We just need to understand if there's a medication that could lead to more dryness versus using another medication that could give you the same benefits but less dryness. So those are little things that we can modify. Obviously there are other characteristics and other risk factors analysis, but they've, they, at the moment they are a bit inconclusive. So these ones are the ones that we have to be looking into. What we have is um, antihistamines, so sort of like medication for, uh, for allergies. We also have antidepressants. So we have to be really looking into um, the overall well-being of the patient. So if the patient is, has anxiety, we know that those medications also provoke even further that, that dryness. And then um, start some medications for skin and acne. So we need to be careful and very, always asking and always looking around the, the, the area around the patient. So those are the main ones that we need to be looking into. In terms of the dryness, is it the same in both eyes? Is one eye that is worse than the other? No, I think it's the same in both eyes. The same in both yeah. eyes. And is there any large glands in your mouth or any mouth dryness? Not that I notice. Okay. Any uh, discharge in the morning? Any itchiness or grittiness or watery at all? Gritty when I wake up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you do anything for it? Do you use any any drops, any gels, any ointments, any masks or any treatment Only at all? Only eye drops mm -hmm. sometimes. Sometimes. So it's not a, a daily occurrence. No. Okay. Yeah. Just when you need it then. Yeah. Okay. Um, any systemic condition or anything that we should be aware of? No. No? no. Okay. And any triggering event for which you think that your dry eye could have developed? Don't. Things so it just happened randomly the past few years. Mm -hmm. And do you wear contact lenses at all? No. No, okay, perfect. So after we've understood a bit more about our patients, uh, about um, if they're taking any medications, we could go into the, into the, the actual testing. Things that I'd be into looking into would be sort of medication, uh, if they had any surgery, all that risk factors that we have, such as if they're in uh, hormone replacement, if they are in antidepressants, if they are on um, specific medication that could lead to more dryness. And then also, as we said about the environment, if they're using a lot the, uh, the computers, computer use, digital devices, um, contact lens wear, because there's things that we can actually modify and there's things that they are in turn, such as aging, uh, female ethnicity, there's things that we cannot change. So we will just go with what the patient is telling us and try and advise. Um, we would always advise, even if it's a very severe stage, so always advise about the environment. So now that we've uh, assessed a bit the, the triaging questions and the risk factors of our patients, we'd go into the testing. So the testing will start with the questionnaires. That's uh, always, we start with the least invasive thing and we move to the more invasive thing. So we start with questionnaires and then with tests that they're non-invasive, such as the breakup time, moving on to osmolarity, and then um, the, the ocular surface staining. Those are the main ones for the diagnosis of dry eye, but then we can add in between some others that would help on the subclassification of that disease.